There are two ways God speaks, two ways. Every attempt of God to communicate with any human being falls into two categories. One is inspiration. The second one is revelation. In inspiration, God wants to show you the present revelation position of the spirit. And what I mean by this, my big English, is that he wants to show you what knowledge you have consumed before that you need to apply now. Are you there? You are not there. Um, do you realize that when you are under an attack, you don't remember? You are, about, you are in a, an accident mode. Your plane, that, your, the plane, the driver has said, uh, we have lost control. Um, from the cockpit, we are saying, happy flight to the spirit world. <laughs> <laughs> do you? It will not happen to you. It will not happen to you. It will not happen to you. You don't want to be in that position. Are you there? When you hear that kind of announcement from the cockpit, your brain is suspended. It's only what is on your heart that can speak. So what God does is that he runs a search on what you have stored in your heart. And he brings the one that is applicable to that circumstance at the spur of the moment. Then he's expecting you because he has brought it to you. He's expecting you to take it. And when you take it, don't stop saying it. That one is inspiration. The thing that is coming to you from the Holy Ghost is not entirely new. It's just that you did not know that it was supposed to be used for this situation. So the Holy Spirit goes into the archives of, of, of the data warehouse and it brings out the strategic information for the moment. And when he brings it out, he will not, he will not take it for you. You will now take it. Make it yours. Put it in your mouth and begin to say it. Because the Holy Ghost is saying it, so you also you need to say it. That's the spirit of faith. In the spirit of faith, you say what God is saying. And as you are saying it, it is coming out as if it's your word, but it's actually the words of God you are speaking, and the words of God go forth with power. That's what will release angels to walk and to hold that, that plane. Are you there? That's inspiration. But in Revelation, God takes you beyond what you know. It takes you into something that you have never known before. It goes beyond your warehouse. Are you there? So when the Bible says, call unto me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not, he's talking about revelation. You don't know it. You don't know it, but you need it. You don't know it, but you need to walk with it. It has never occurred into your heart, but the Bible says eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and it has not entered into the, the heart of man. That, that, that thing that eyes have not seen, that ears have not heard, that has not occurred in your heart is called a mystery. It's beyond your scope. You don't know it. He said, one of the rewards I give you for coming to me is the reward of divine revelation. I was coming back from work. Coming back from work. Those days I used to work in Abuja and uh, they had not banned bikes then. So I would take a bus from Wuse to Life Camp Junction. Then from Life Camp Junction, I take a bike to my house. My house was in Life Camp. So this blessed day, I was on a bike going to my house, and then the Holy Ghost now came upon me on the bike. The bike man, I didn't know. I thought it was only me, the Holy Ghost came upon. He came upon both of us. The, the implication was that the bike man didn't know where we were going. We were just... <laughs> we, were, we were just going. 
Me, I was high in spirit. I was not even conscious of what was happening in the natural. I was, I was downloading. I, do you know it was on a bike I got, I got the calling for this ministry? On a bike. <laughs> the bike man passed my house and went, and we speed, speed. And I realized the Holy Ghost too was, was dealing with him, but he couldn't interpret what was, there was an energy that was on him, but he couldn't interpret it. Uh, when, when, when I now got the first consignment of the download and we got lost, the back man said, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> then I told him, okay, go like this, go like this. He now dropped me off. I gave him extra money because he, he came under the weight of glory. <laughs> I entered into the gate, entered into the sitting room and thank God DSTV was on, Benny Hinn was doing This Is Your Day. In the moment I got into that place and I started hearing Benny Hinn talk, that presence that I lost with the bike man, and the thing came back. And I, when it comes like that, I take my diary and my pen. The first thing he says was, raise for me a remnant in this generation. So I asked him, what, what is remnant? Because, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> Those things you saw on the brokyo. That was the day that was downloaded on the 25th of July, 2005. If you really have an encounter with God, the date will live with you. It will, it will be installed. The bike man went home with more money, but I came home with more revelation. He had answers to his own prayers. I had a reward. Do you understand that? Go for a reward. Tell your neighbor, go for this thing. Tell your neighbor, this thing that we are talking about, there's, there's a reward inside. So he that cometh to God must believe. The earth is the one that must initiate the protocol. The earth must initiate the process. That's all I've been able to say today, even though... Okay, I have 18 minutes. Let me give you one. Haven't said all of this. The first definition of an altar is a supernatural landing strip. Who can tell us why planes have not yet landed in Otupo? You are not following me. There is no infrastructure to receive planes there. There are many people that are resident in Otopo that have money, enough money to be on planes. But the reason why planes don't go there is not because of lack of money. What is required to receive it is not there. So before we talk about whether there's money, there's another more important matter, which is whether the facility required to receive a plane is present. An altar is a supernatural landing strip. If you don't have an altar, the spirit world will not land in your domain. It can land with your neighbors. It can land, even a demonic dimension can land with your relatives. Land everywhere, but you, nothing lands because you don't have the infrastructure to receive these things. A supernatural landing strip. And for each definition, I'll give you scriptures to back it. But the scripture I have for this one is a long one. I'll do the scripture tomorrow, but stay with that definition. A supernatural landing strip. How many of you still remember Isaac running away, away from his brother Esau? And as he was running from home, he actually thought he was running. That's what he thought in his brain, that he was running, he was deciding where he was going. 
And then he came to a place that was called Lost. Evening tide had visited him. And he felt like sleeping in the open field. And then he fetched some stones. He didn't want his head to be on the level of the ground. He wanted some elevation. Got some stones and made them pillow. And he put his head to sleep. And unknown to him, that location was a location his grandfather set up an altar to God. Many years ago. In the life of Abraham, he would pitch his tent and build his altars. His altars were permanent, his tents were temporary. Today we build tents and we pitch altars. Our dwelling places are permanent, but our altars are temporary. You can attend to your altar for two weeks in the month of January. And then in February, March, April. So what is temporary in your life is, is the altar. What is permanent is your tent. For Abraham, his altars were built. They were concrete. His tent can change. It was temporary. That's the description of a man that modeled the life of the tent and the altar. If you see the geography of the places where he set up altars, because you cannot know where his tent is. The only way to know where his tent is, is where his altars are. He was here. He was here. How do you know it? By the altar. Not by his tent. He was here. So his grandchild that knows nothing about his priesthood was escaping from home. The guy came somewhere and decided to rest. He didn't know that he was not the one that chose the place to rest. It was the place that chose him. If there's an altar in your family, maybe there's a demonic one. That altar can even determine who you marry. You don't know. You think you chose the woman. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me not trouble you. Let me not trouble. Let me leave you. You think you are so wise. This is your brain that you use the University of Agriculture. It's, it's so wise. You are so wise. No, we'll go deep. Then you will discover that you have been an object of manipulation for, for so many years. <laughs> he thought he was the one that chose where his day will end. He didn't know that the, the place chose him. And the very stones that his grandfather used to build the altar were the stones he considered to use for pillow. When he put his head on that pillow, the only thing he could see was the result of what his grandfather had created through his priesthood. His natural eyes were closed and his spiritual eyes were open. The first thing he saw was that it was a spirit city, an angelic stronghold. The angels maintained an oscillatory motion. The Bible says that they were, they were ascending and descending. I know that in your brain, what you, you fix in your brain is descending and ascending. No. What was responsible for the oscillatory motion was the altar. So they were ascending from the altar and descending. Where, 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 the, where they ascending from? The altar. A spirit city had been formed by a man's priesthood. I came back from my trip. And then I, I was passing where, I know you are aware that I, sometimes my eyes open. Where the women that came for three days dry fasting, where they did the prayer. In my wife's school, I was passing there. And I saw the angel that is standing there because of that prayer. That angel is trapped there because of that altar. There are many things you don't know. It's not everybody that can die. Let me tell you something. Death. He doesn't know the road to some people's house. They have done that fast for how many years? 
seven years. And the angel is standing there till this moment. Angels were trapped to that location. They were limited to that location. The man that set up the altar died long time. But the result of his priesthood lived on. Now, do you still, can you, do you still remember what the Bible says about Abel? By, Abel, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he received witness that he was righteous, and God testifying of his gifts, by which him being dead, yet speak the consequence of his sacrifice lived on beyond him. So the angels were ascending and descending. And above, there was a portal, an opening from the heavens to interact with the earth. And it was Jesus himself that was standing at the opening. The guy that was receiving this revelation was not, had not yet accepted the God of his ancestors. He was, he was a rolling stone, he was a reggae rag. But he, what his ancestors had was strong enough to sponsor an encounter. When the guy rose up from the encounter, he negotiated his salvation with God. He said, if you can, give me food to eat. Give me clothes on my back. And bring me back again. Then I will now become, you will be my God. That means, let's discuss it. I need food. I don't know where I will get the next meal. I don't know where I will get the next change of raiment. And I'm not sure I will come back. If you do these three things, then I will know that you have power beyond my power. So I cannot submit to your authority. He negotiated the salvation with God. Can you see how faithless this young man was? He, he, you no, know, he didn't have the faith of his ancestors. Do you, you, you think God forgot the, his negotiation? When the guy came back to that same spot, an angel came to, to arrest him, to remind him of. That was where his name changed. And it's a new name that he got by revelation that entered into the creed. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Oh, I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Who told you that the things you learned are the things that pertain to your destiny? The ones you study in school. They are great and mighty things. There are great and mighty things of which you must be shown. And the Bible says you don't know them. Can we pray in a moment? Because it says, call unto me. And I will answer you. And I will show you. Great and mighty things. The altar created that supernatural landing strip. And the earth realm played host to a spirit city, a stronghold of angels. Show me. Can you ask him? Show me. Show me. Show me great and mighty things that I do not know. Cry to him. Many of us are lost because you have not been shown things. Show me! Kilamo home is sick daily. Resco fama halakadia. Bode keso combo kodehi. Eske tobi nalai kobamara. 
Asim to show you. Show me. Show me. Kobe sile ede kubresko falamanda. Sheli mo kumbra halatalia. Et la bobo sante li mokoria brisca tela. Et la bobo senduria kansila kadelia mantoria.